My name is Mark Hayward. I am a world yo-yo champion. It's true, my mom is proud. My talk today is called A Yo-Yo with a Broken String, How Failure Leads to Success. And I want to uh, start off by telling you about one of my more educational failures. In 1992, I was performing with the Gemini Jugglers. This is the full group, but in this particular story, I was just performing with the Midwest Division. Matt and I went out to do some street performing at the Willie Street Fair, which is on the uh, gentle, tolerant, hippie side of Madison, Wisconsin. And when you go out to do a street show, the first thing you have to do is pick your performance spot. And Matt and I were fairly, um, we were fairly inexperienced performers, so when it came time to pick our spot, we made two critical mistakes. The first one is that Rather than picking a nice open area like this, we picked a little tiny strip of pavement about this big. And that meant that once we gathered a crowd, we were going to have children seated directly in front of us and essentially beneath us. Our second critical mistake is that we decided to perform in the gutter. <laughs> directly in the gutter, sticks, rocks, leaves, the whole thing. And our thinking at the time was that it would be kind of like a uh, natural amphitheater with a raised area for the audience. We gathered a crowd, we got the show started, and everything went fine until we got to the grand finale. Matt's job was to juggle three flaming torches on a rollabola. And if you're not familiar, a rollabola is just a board that's balanced on a pipe. So Matt was juggling the three torches on the rollabola. Uh, he did it just fine. He finished up, he handed the torches to me. My job was to juggle them on just the pipe. And I started juggling the torches and stepped up on the roller. This is where our two critical mistakes became important. <laughs> I had only ever practiced this trick on level ground, and it turns out that the gutter slopes quite a bit. So as soon as I stepped up on that roller, I had to fight to get my balance. And as I was doing that, the roller rolled backwards, hit a rock, and stopped dead. I lost my balance. I lost control of the torches. It was like an explosion of flames toward the children at my feet. One torch hit my shirt, lighting it on fire. The next one landed between scattering terrified kids, and the third one flipped and arced as if in slow motion until, thwack, it landed in the spokes of a kid's bike lying on the ground. For just a moment, everyone looked at that torch as the flames licked up around the spokes, and then the entire audience fled. I learned two important things from that show. The first one is, that uh, there's no better way to, to learn a lesson and to remember it than an embarrassing failure. I also learned that I am responsible to ensure the conditions that lead to my own success. I didn't have enough space, I hadn't practiced the trick enough, just weren't quite ready. And it turns out that we learn better from failures than from successes. This has been proved by studies. It turns out that your brain grows more when you get it wrong than when you get it right. This is a photo of the Gemini Jugglers Midwest Division after the Willie Street Fair. You may notice there's plenty of space around the jugglers. <laughs> Lesson learned. So that was an example of a failure. I want to talk about how failure leads to success. There are several tools that I have found over the years that I use to turn failures into success. And the first one is passion. I love what I do. I love performing. I love making people laugh. It's my hope that in some small way I'm making the world a better place. That's my passion. We all have our own passions. You may have a passion to create, to provide for a family, to make money, whatever. But it's my passion that gives me the drive to pick myself up after a failure and try again. Another tool is determination. If I don't really want to do it, it's never going to happen. I think back to my first solo street show. I had been doing shows with groups for years, but the first time I did it by myself, getting up off of that bench and doing that first show, getting that show started, is the hardest thing I've ever done. But I did it because I was determined to get on the path of becoming a professional entertainer. Without my determination, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't be able to do any of my tricks, I wouldn't have a show, I wouldn't have a career. And for all of us and all the things we do, of course, the final step to this process is success, and you can't stop until you get there. And in this context, a lot of times you'll hear people talking about working for a win. And in this, in this context, I don't like the word win, because win implies an endpoint. And I 
feel like success is not a one-way street with an endpoint, but rather that success is a continuous and changing journey. And the road gets easier to navigate as you go. And the main thing that helps out with that is experience. It's the most important tool in the arsenal. The more you get, the better. And experience is what allows you to accept a mistake and to learn from it. But the real prize is that experience is the stepping stone to wisdom. It's the only way you can get there. And wisdom is what helps me with informed risk taking. It took me a long time to learn which risks were uh, worth going for and which ones were better to let pass by because there is such a thing as smart failure and stupid failure. Are you gonna get something out of taking a risk or are you just gonna get abuse? <laughs> One of my favorite things about the, the, the tools of turning success into failure. And the final tool is a positive attitude. I surround myself with people who have a positive attitude. And when I mess up in front of my friends, the, the thing that I hear most often is, dude, that was awesome. <laughs> I was doing a street show and I picked a drunken tough guy as my volunteer and then I hit him in the face with a yo-yo. My friends thought that was fantastic. <laughs> but the best part of a positive attitude is the ability to embrace serendipity. And this can be incredible. Just because you didn't get what you expected does not mean that you have a failure. At my very first paid gig ever, it did not occur to me in advance that when you're juggling eggs, it's boring if they don't break. Good thing I screwed that up. I'm telling you, those kindergartners thought that was the best part of the show. <laughs> so if any of you are note takers, here's a list of the, the five tools that I use. So we've talked about, I talked about a failure, talked about turning failure into success. I wanna talk about success itself. It's important to define success because, well, it's, it, success is something that's self-defined. You have to figure out what it means for you in your particular situation. Because if you don't define it, it's hard to know when you get there. And when you, when you do define success, don't forget it's a journey. This photo was taken of me at a dream gig. I was working with a bunch of other acts. We were on a, a big tour through glorious theaters. It was fantastic. But of course, the reality is that my career did not end with this gig. I still have to work. I still have to try to find more like it. And when you do have a success, don't forget to celebrate it when you get there. That's my birthday cake. I made it. <laughs> so you may be wondering, what's my biggest success? Well, I got to go on The Late Show with David Letterman. Twice. And it was a huge success just to get to go on the show at all, regardless of how it went. And the truth of the matter is that um, the trick that I was trying to do, I missed it in every way that I could miss <laughs> before I got it. And it was fine because even though I messed up in every way I could mess up, it was great because they wanted me to succeed. At Letterman, they have a positive attitude. They thanked me for coming and were grateful, really visibly grateful that I helped to make the show a success. That, I didn't expect that at all. I've also been on the show America's Got Talent. And despite the great things that I did for them, when the show aired, they only showed my mistakes. So America's Got Talent edits to make you look bad. Letterman edits to make you look good. Who would you want to work with? On Letterman, I did just one trick. And now I'd like to show you the entire routine. One of the things that I do as a, as a juggler and as a yo-yo man is I tend to come up with unusual uses for everyday objects. And for years, I felt like a regular household mousetrap had immense unused potential. I figured out how to use one in my show. I have here a regular household mousetrap, and I also have a bag of jet puffed marshmallows. <laughs> the goal here is to set the trap and use it to eat a marshmallow without breaking any fingers. And you may have noticed that I've added a few things to the trap. It's attached to a base for stability, and then there's a little piece of plastic attached to the killing bar, and this is the marshmallow launching platform. <laughs> By the word launch, you may be able to tell that the marshmallow will be airborne, so something still has to trigger the trap, and that's where 
the blowgun comes in. <laughs> yes, I have here the Avenger Ninja blowgun. It says right on it, warning, this is not a toy and should be used by adults for target or survival use only. I'd say I'm doing both. For me, it was called college. And that brings me to the last thing on the trap, which is just a small target that's connected to the trigger. So we'll get this set up here without breaking any fingers. Are you ready? One of my favorite American values is that bigger is better. So if the mouse trap was good, naturally, that means the rat trap is better. And from my perspective, we go from the potential for short-term injury to the potential for permanent disfigurement. No, no, I got a whole pocket full. <laughs> oh. No, no, sometimes a performer will miss a trick on purpose <laughs> just to make it look hard. And now to further increase the danger, I will use the same marshmallow again. <laughs> But you know, as I was saying a little earlier, bigger is better. Let me show you what I found. A wombat trap! And there aren't too many wombats around here, so this was a little tough to get. And I couldn't find a behemoth 60-pound marshmallow to really go with this trap. So instead, I brought along these three marshmallow stunt doubles. And this bad boy is rigged up to fire the marshmallow stand-ins at the speed of light right at me, and then I'll juggle them. How's that sound? Yeah. yeah. Sounds to me like I need something better to do with my time. Are you ready? Here we go. So, what have I learned from this routine? Well, I learned a couple. I learned one really good thing. Fail on purpose. It can be incredible to build failure into a project just to see what's gonna happen. And I'd like to tell you that I did that when I designed and wrote this routine, but that's actually not true. My intention was that I would get really good and I would hit every trick every time on the first try. But as I performed this routine over the years, I realized missing makes it better. In this routine, I weave around in this strange in-between land that is both success and failure. It's awesome. So were all of those misses intentional? Nope. Were some of the misses intentional? I'm not telling. <laughs> I've got one last thing for you. Most people fail at failing. Don't be most people. And when the people around you make mistakes, remember the magic words. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you.